Okay, potting compounds and reverse engineering. This is an electronic assembly. You can see this white material here is obscuring a circuit which is somewhere uh, inside this box. Uh, here is an old uh, Ethernet card, a really old Ethernet card, but there's a couple parts on it which have been potted. Uh, potting compounds basically an epoxy and it's poured around electronics. Uh, it's used a lot in harsh environments like the uh, automotive or marine environments where you want to protect an assembly uh, from the elements. Uh, it's also often used in uh, assemblies where the manufacturer doesn't want the end customer to understand uh, how the circuit functions. So, uh, anyways, it's really one of my favorite uh, forums, and a fellow asked the, the basically the same question as how to get rid of the stuff. Um, and it's led me on a merry chase here for the last couple of weeks. Um, unlike the LED bulbs that I've been tearing down where the potting compound peels off uh, very easily, it's like a rubber like substance. Uh, this is a different class of epoxy, it seems to be much harder. And uh, it piqued my interest uh, how to get rid of it. Okay, so potting compounds, all at least the ones I can find, appear to be basically epoxies. And epoxies have a really interesting materials property called the glass transition temperature. Uh, basically, that means uh, the material has different uh, states uh, depending on its temperature. Uh, let me just pop up a graph here. Uh, Young's modulus is on the y-axis, temperature is on the uh, x. Uh, Young's modulus is just a fancy way of saying whether or not the material is um, sort of glass-like or whether it's rubbery or almost liquid-like. And this curve here is basically showing that at low temperatures, uh, the epoxies tend to act like glass-like materials, which makes sense. It's exactly what you want. But interestingly enough, there's actually a part in the curve here where the material changes uh, and uh, goes through a transition. Uh, and that, that's the glass transition temperature. And that is basically telling me that if I hit epoxies with heat, uh, they should become rubbery, which will make them much easier to pick off. So uh, let's just pop up the classic tool you would use to uh, do that in an electronic assembly. Okay, so uh, what i got going on here, a classic component here, it's a hot air rework gun. It's used for surface mount technology and soldering. Uh, also is basically a real great source of super precise heat because that seems to be what would be required here to uh, affect this epoxy. Uh, the other thing is I actually had to build a um, basically a, a really poorly constructed uh, vent hood. Uh, it, when you heat up epoxies they get really stinky and I'm not sure if they're all that good and healthy for you. So um, actually made those three pieces obviously uh, an organic uh, uh, a respirator with an organic filter cartridge filter is probably a pretty smart idea. Uh, anyways, uh, if I hit it with heat, I can uh, basically uh, really change the state of the epoxy and really rapidly uh, uh, pull it off, uh, just using, you know, quite frankly, a, a spudging tool. And uh, let me just zoom into this little relay here, and I'll show you some of the initial success I had. So this is a relay, and you can see now the coils come uh, slightly exposed as uh, I heated it up with the hot uh, gun and peeled back the plastic, uh, you can start to expose the circuitry, and of course that's really the uh, essence of reverse engineering something. Uh, the problem, of course, now is, uh, is using simply a very sharp uh, instrument like this one here, and of course uh, you can get a real chance of damaging uh, the uh, underlying electronics. So that leads me to my uh, sort of next uh, tool that I think uh, is helpful in this as an endeavor. Uh, so here I'll do a little voiceover work uh, once all the fans are operating and uh, I'm wearing a respirator, you can't speak. Uh, it is stinky stuff, but uh, this is just a photograph of a, a DC to DC converter I pulled off an old Ethernet card, and you can see how the epoxy, once it's been warmed up enough, uh, just simply peels away. Uh, a little dental pick is also seems to be a pretty good tool for this application. Uh, in terms of some approaches that uh, didn't work, uh, this is something called an air eraser from Pash. Uh, it's used often for uh, etching glass. You can load this little container up with all sorts of uh, a grit and uh, it produces a really fine stream. I was hoping that it might be a really precise tool for uh, removing the epoxy once it got hot enough, uh, but it's simply just too slow, so this was definitely not something that was working well. Uh, the other thing that didn't work very well, surprisingly, was a hot air gun. I thought this might actually bring up the uh, heat of the little assembly quite nicely. Uh, it just simply, though, wasn't able to get it hot enough, at least for the few eyes tearing down. Uh, the, the little flying control out of this um, hot air rework uh, gun was much more... Uh, Productive. So again, this, this was not a successful approach here. So uh, these two items uh, didn't help the process. Okay, so here's the results from one of the uh, modules I took off that Ethernet card. It uh, was a, a DC to DC converter, I suspect. Uh, you can see most of the potting compounds now have been removed. Uh, and of course, you can see the circuit tree uh, emerging, some transistors, a coil. Uh, you can also see some parts are missing, unfortunately, and that's because I had to heat the uh, item up so much that... Uh, it basically mel melted the solder as well and uh, took the parts off. So I suspect um, 
that one might want to consider building a crucible to actually preheat the assembly up really close to the glass temperature and then use the additional heat from a hot air rework gun to actually then just push it over uh, to somewhere more gently uh, take this compound off. So uh, anyways, the uh, first assumption that uh, heat is the primary uh, tool to remove potting compound, I, I say that's pretty true. And uh, that just comes down to being becoming uh, mechanically um, cautious as you take the parts apart to, uh, to see what the topology is. I still suspect it's a pretty destructive process and you probably want to x-ray some of these assemblies too uh, if you're trying to do reverse engineering to get a better sense of the topology. And inevitably it looks like you'll lose some components as you do it.